today we're going to look at awesome activities in Seesaw and specifically we're going to look at how to create an activities within Seesaw. So this is actually something that Seesaw added recently, the activities section, and we're going to look at it in a little bit more detail today. I've already done the intro. Glad you're here today. So the first link you the first link that I have here is a link to a help center right at Seesaw. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time today actually talking about how to set up your account and some of the other features within Seesaw. We're going to look at specifically how to add activities to Seesaw. If you're new to Seesaw, I've got a link here to a tutorial that my colleague Adam Hinton did a while back. And it's www.tinyurl.com continuing to have impact. So if you go to our site, um, that's at our, at our board level, there's a link there to a tutorial all about Seesaw. So if you're new to Seesaw, Adam will walk you through how to get your account set up and, and how to uh, get started with your students. Okay. I've included a link to my slideshow in the chat. So there should be a hyperlink there for you. So you can access some of these resources um, later at your own convenience. And I've got quite a few hyperlinks throughout the slideshow. So Seesaw can transform your classroom. Seesaw is an, is an awesome tool for giving all students a place to share their learning in meaningful ways. Plus it allows teachers a place to organize student work, track growth, and to communicate with parents. And recently Seesaw added activities so if you haven't used Seesaw before, it's a learning management platform that's more or less geared for students in grades primary, one, two, and three. You could use it with students in upper elementary, but the uh, majority of people that are using it um, feel that it's best used for, for little ones. Seesaw has embedded creation tools. Uh, students can create right from the Seesaw, right, right right from within Seesaw using the embedded tools. So they have access to their webcam, they can insert a video, they can annotate something or um, an, an image that you've uploaded in an assignment, they can add a file, they can add notes, and they can add hyperlinks as well. Students can um, use all of those things to manipulate and to add on to um, extensions that you've included, all right? So they can add their voice for, for explaining, reflecting, and of course, adding fluency. Seesaw has an extensive library, and this part's very exciting. Teachers can search for thousands of teacher-created um, ideas that have already been um, posted. Um, so you can create these activities to share with your students, and you can very easily modify them as well. Teachers can also create their own activities, and that's what we're going to look at today. Um, we're going to look at how to create an activity within Google Slides and how to upload it and put it into your Seesaw. So all the while you can track their progress and uh, assess their student growth. So I've got a snapshot here of the activity library within Seesaw. So you can filter by grade level by subject, and if you're looking for, say, something in addition or subtraction within math, you can filter it even more. So there's um, many, many great suggestions that you can find within the activity library in Seesaw, okay? So here's an example, um, addition using 10 frames, and you would simply click on assign, and then you can change the terminology if you like. You can organize and easily see who has completed the task. So when you post an assignment within Seesaw, um, you can see what students in your class have completed the activity. Seesaw also has an icon shortcuts um, that you can use when you're describing your activity. So the icon will give the students visual instructions for your non-readers. So I've got a link here to the chart itself. So when I click on this hyperlink, it's going to open up. And you can see all of the shortcuts, OK? So you type in the text, and the image is going to appear for the students. So it makes it a little bit easier for your students to understand what it is you want them to do on the activity, OK? Very good. 
Back to our slideshow. Okay, you can take a, a snapshot of something and insert it into your slideshow. So on a Windows computer, um, if you hold down the Windows icon, uh, shift and the letter S, you can take a snapshot of something that you have on your screen, save that image, and that could be an activity that you could start within Seesaw. On a Chromebook, you simply hold down Control Shift and the split screen, which is the sixth uh, tab on the top row, and you can take a snapshot as well um, on the Chromebook. That image is going to go to your files, and you can simply upload that to your activity. All right. You can use drawings or notes to create templates right from Seesaw. Okay, so you can use the embedded tools to create something very quickly and get that started with your students. If you're looking for more ideas and how to create activities with labels, I've got a hyperlink here down below. And this is a link to a slideshow that's going to kind of guide you through how to create labels, all right? And of course, these labels can be uploaded as an activity as well. All right. Back to my slideshow. All right. So Google Slides is a great spot to create your templates um, for your activities within Seesaw. You can also use Google Drawings. Um, but I like to use Google Slides. And most teachers are familiar with Google Slides. So that's what we're going to focus on today. I'm going to walk you through how to um, set up a template um, within Google Slides, save that as a PNG, and upload that as an activity to your Seesaw. All right, so here's another, another example. All right, so you can see down below here, um, the teacher has inserted some of the images to make it a little bit easier for the students to understand what it is the teacher is asking them to do. Okay, so what we're going to do, um, we're going to open up Google Slides here in a few seconds, and I'm going to insert a blank slide, and we're going to add a background image of our choice, and then we're going to insert a large rectangle along the top. We're going to add a couple of circles, and I'll show you how to format those and, to comb and how to group them. And then um, we're going to add some instructions for our students. Um, we'll talk a little bit about um, what fonts are ideal for students to use. And we're also going to show you how to duplicate the slide so that you don't have to go back and rebuild it all over again, which is a huge time saver, okay? Um, we're going to save it as a PNG and upload it to your Seesaw. Also, to uh, future slideshows, uh, you don't have to... Um, you, you can very easily just make a copy of your slideshow um, make some changes that you need, and then you're going to re-upload it. So you don't have to go back and do it all over again. Just make some changes, um, copy it first, make some changes, and then re-upload it. And the last one there, number 10, in Seesaw, you can recopy the activity from your library, okay? So all you, all you have to do is just change the text and upload the new activity to your library. So you don't have to go back and um, do a lot of extra work. You simply have to make some little changes and you can simply re-upload it and um, save a lot of time. Okay, so let's have a look here. So here's one that I created the other day. So you can see I've got my, my label here at the top. I've got an image here in the center and I've got some instructions for my students. So this if it was a finished product. I would save this as a PNG and upload it to my um, to my Seesaw with instructions for my students. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to build a template like this inside of Google Slides. Okay, so here's another example. Um, this is actually just a duplicate of the one that I just made. So I changed the title of the text and the background color. So it's pretty straightforward. Okay, next slide is a blank one. So. Hi Paul, can uh, I interrupt for a moment? Sure. Uh, I just had a message from someone who's trying to get into your session. I'm not sure who your moderator is, um, but there should be a pop-up. Yeah, yeah, Lockie was supposed to be my moderator today, and for some reason he wasn't. He's not here today, so I'm not sure what happened. I tried to log in, Paul. I had. Oh, there you are. The there he is. So I logged in another way. So it was me coming in, but it's not being recorded right now. Um, I'm actually I'm actually recording it. Yeah, it's okay. being recorded. Um, 
but uh, that means that there's no one there to let uh, external people in. So, oh, okay. Uh, Lockie, what was the account number? Uh, I can send it to you. Uh, it's, um, it's, uh, sorry, Paul. It's uh, Ichiro 5 uh, uh, SL HN Helper F5 is Five? the password. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks. Sorry, Paul. Carry on. That's okay. No problem. Okay, folks. So I've opened up uh, a blank template here in Google Slides. So I'm going to delete what's on the page here. There we go. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is look for a background image. So I have one saved on my desktop. And I'm going to say choose image. And I've got something here, Ocean 2. OK, so you can bring up any image um, of your choice. So the next part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to Insert, and I'm going to choose a shape. I'm going to choose the first one here. And I'm going to draw a large rectangle the whole length of my image. All right, I'm going to pull that down just a little bit. And then I'm going to go up here to the top. And I'm going to, I'm going to leave my fill color for now, border width. I'll say transparent for now. All right, the next part, I'm going to go over here to insert again. Back down to shapes again. And now I'm going to grab another circle. And... I'm going to move it and put it in the center here. And then I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go down to format options. Okay, I'm gonna go over to size and rotation. And I'm just gonna make sure both of these are the same. So my circle is the exact right size. That's a little bit big. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. We'll go 5.0 for both of them here. 5.0 and 5.0. Okay, very good. All right, so try to get that in the center. All right, so now I'm going to go up top here and I'm going to change my background color for my first rectangle. So let's go with maybe a green color and same thing with the circle here. So fill color and I'm going to say green again. Okay. So I'm going to try and group both of these. So I'm going to uh, hold down shift and right click on these. And I'm going to say, I want to group these guys. Mm. We'll come back to that. All right, so the next part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this one uh, I'm going to put another circle. Actually, I'm going to change um, the, the border width here, the, uh, the border color. I don't want any borders at all. So I'm going to say transparent for the circle and then transparent for my rectangle as well. Oh, sorry about that. And so there we go. Very good. And I need to get rid of the uh, border color for the rectangle there. Let's try that one more time. And we'll say transparent. Okay, very good. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another circle inside of the first circle here. So I'm gonna go up to insert and draw another shape. And I'm going to draw another circle and put it right in here. Very good. And this one I'm going to leave white. Um, I'm going to try and make that exactly a perfect circle. And we'll put the same number in there, 
and that looks a little better. Very good. And let's get rid of the uh, the white line on the outside. Okay, and uh, border width, fill color transparent. Um, this one I do want white, sorry. Okay, almost done here. And I want to get rid of the line on the outside. Um, transparent. There we go. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to bring in an image for my students. So I'm going to go up to Insert, and I'm going to go to Image. I'll say Search the Web, and I'll type in maybe Dolphin Clip Art. Google's going to do a search for me. I'll bring this one in. It's going to come in oversized. I'm going to grab the corners, make it proportionally smaller, drag it up, and drop it right in here. Okay. Very good. Okay, so the next part is I need to, to create a workspace for my students. So once again, I go to Insert, and I'll say Shape. And I'm going to grab the second one here, pull this down. And I'm going to copy and paste that, Control C, Control V, drag it over, and drop it over here to the right. Okay, so now I can put my instructions in here. Um, I'll say text box, and I'll say students, please include an image of your title book. And then down below here, I'll say insert, um, go to image again, search the web, and I'm going to look for, I'll say camera clip art. And I'll grab that photo, and I'm going to say insert. Once again, I'm going to resize. and drop that right in here. Okay, and I'll add a little bit more text down below here. I'll say insert image here. And pull that over a little bit. Center that. And let's move this one over just a little bit. Okay, so now in order to save myself a little bit of work, I'm going to go back and delete this one. And I'm going to copy all of this one. Uh, hold down Shift, Control C, and then Control V. And now I can pull this over. So now I've got my font, my instructions, and I can import a new image and go over here and just change the terminology. And so um, with this text box, I might be, I'll have them do something else. Okay, so when you're done with your slide, okay, um, you can duplicate all of this again if you want to. So go up to slide, and you can say duplicate, um, slide, and duplicate again. Okay, so I can change my instructions on my second and third slide. Now I've got a choice here. I can upload um, a single file like the image to Seesaw, or I can actually upload the whole slideshow. Okay, so that's up to you. So if it's just an image, you would say file and download, and you're going to save it as a PNG. A PNG is a slightly larger file than a JPEG, so the resolution is going to be a little bit higher um, when you upload that file to Seesaw. Okay, so that is how you create a template in Google Slides and um, save it and upload it to Seesaw. All right, let's go back to my slideshow here. Pick Collage is a great app on the iPads. It's a great tool to help create templates. You can set backgrounds, search the web for images like I was just doing. You can, um, you know, you can 
write in Doodle as well. You can add stickers to very easily create templates for a variety of subjects for your students. So that's one of my favorite applications to use with Seesaw. So if you haven't used Pic Collage, it's a free download and you might want to consider using that one. So with the iPad, you would simply build it, save it, and then upload the image to your library and add it for your students. You can add multimedia instructions okay, for your students. So if you want to link to a YouTube video or if you have a video that you've created, say within Flipgrid or something else you've created, it's the last icon down below here. It says add multimedia instructions or example. So um, that's an easy way to add um, other activities for your students. Okay. I've got a couple of videos, how-to videos here for you. I'm not going to play these right now because I'm right now I'm just sharing my screen in not a tab, so the audio is not going to play. But you have the link to my slideshow, and you can access these later at your own convenience. Okay. I've got two more videos here for editing and also another uh, YouTube video for helping you out with creating activities within Seesaw. And I've got some hyperlinks down below here to other Seesaw videos that you might be interested in. Okay. All right. So I'm going to open up to questions. If anybody has any questions, um, I've got another slide here for you to connect with me. If you have any questions, that's my email address. And um, you can contact me, and I'll get back to you um, any way that I can. Paul, so, uh, yes. I have somebody in the chat, and they're just asking if you can repost the link, because there's a few people who joined late. So if, uh, to your slide, thanks. No problem. All right, so let me go back to my first slide here. And for those of you that came um, a little bit later on, um, on the slide here, I've got two links. The first one is a link to uh, the Help Center within Seesaw. So if you're new to Seesaw, this will walk you through how to get Seesaw set up with your students. Um, the second link down below here is a link to our um, help website that we have at, at our board. Um, I'm with Schnecto Central and it's called Continuing to Have Impact. When you click on that, you'll see some PD video resources that we have there. And my colleague Adam Hinton did a session earlier this spring on getting started with Seesaw. So if you're new to Seesaw, that would be a good place to start. Here's the link to my slideshow, and I have this up in the chat as well. So it's just tenify.ir slash H capital U W capital K three M capital K and a capital M. So that was a very specific focus on um, how to create uh, templates within Google Slides and how you're going to upload those and get those into your Seesaw. So highly recommend using Google Slides or you can use Google Drawings, but um, Google Slides makes it really easy. Uh, one other question here for you. Uh, if you attach a link in your Google Slides and then upload that into Seesaw, can you still open that in uh, open that link in Seesaw or do you need to do anything else with uh, the share part? Yeah, you have to add that as a separate link because what happens is in in, um, in Seesaw, what you're doing is you're going to upload, um, you're uploading your image, okay? So the students are going to be able to use the tools to, man to manipulate on it. So the hyperlink that you have right on it, I don't think it's going to work. You'll have to add that down below. You'll have to add the link separately. That's a good question. And then uh, another question is, how do you archive old activities so that you can free up space and have more uh, more in, in Seesaw? Yeah, so Seesaw, the free version allows you to post 100 activities. So if you're using it frequently, what you might want to do is consider uploading a number of slides within you know one slideshow. Because if you do them separately, you're quickly going to use up that 100 uh, free activities. So a lot of these um, these sites, they want you to buy a subscription to 
um, to their programming. So they allow for 100 free activities and then you'll have to um, consider purchasing. I'm not sure what the pricing that they have for Seesaw is. I know Book Creator does the exact same thing. And uh, with Book Creator, it's $5 um, for 180 books. And then for 1,000 books, they double the price to $10. However, with the free version, uh, with Book Creator, you can do everything in, everything that you can do with the paid subscription. So Seesaw is the exact same, uh, pretty much, except they're limiting you to 100, 100 activities. So if you're using it frequently, um, you, you, you're probably going to run out. I'm actually relatively new to Seesaw myself. It's something I haven't used a whole lot. I'm quite interested in sharing it with teachers in my board and, and throughout the province. So it's a great learning platform for students, especially for little ones. And the activities is a great, um, is a great spot to, um, to post your, your assignments for your students. And with the top, and with the possibility of uh, more remote learning um, throughout the school year, it's something um, people are quite interested in. Hopefully, we don't have to go there, but it, it's it's a possibility. I got another question here for you, Paul. Do you have any suggestions for teachers uh, that have more than one class, like a specialist, who want to use Seesaw? Hmm. That is a very good question. Unfortunately, I haven't used it enough to, um, to answer that question. And Beth said, uh, the tiny URL for continuing to have impact new, uh, new to Seesaw on slide three doesn't work. So just Yes. Yeah, that one's not working, so you have to use this one here. Tenify.ir slash H-U-W-K-3-M. You can tell this is a keen group, Paul, because they're already into your slideshow. Very good. Excellent. Yeah, so Seesaw has lots of great uh, tutorials there. And um, if you have any questions, um, like I said, please feel free to send me an email, and hopefully I can help you out. So that's a quick tutorial on how to set up uh, a template within Google Slides and to get your students started in Seesaw.